I think our football team has done a great job uh, handling the expectations for the 2011 season. Uh, really began when we came back for off our Christmas break uh, last, uh, last winter. Right off the bat, the kids beat me to the punch about not being complacent and knowing that you know the bullseye, so to speak, would be on our back this year. I thought we had a great off-season workouts. Our strength numbers were the best that they've ever been, uh, actually, in the history of Lehigh football. So that's certainly exciting. I thought we had a great spring practice. We've had a, a, a lot of guys back on campus from time to time over over the summer to work out together. Uh, I think we've had great leadership from our guys. We certainly know, you know, after the poll today that, you know, we are the number one, uh, we're, the, we're the favorite to win the league this year. That's always a challenge, and uh, I think our guys will work very hard um, to get after that challenge. We, we talk to the guys all the time about, even in the recruiting process, that the expectations of being a Lehigh football player are very, very high, and they are again this year. So I think it's something our guys will embrace, and it's something that they're actually excited about. Chris Lum really took control of the quarterback position last year. Can you talk about what, how he developed last year and what do you see for him going forward here in 2011? I couldn't have been more proud of how Chris handled the 2010 season. He had to go through a, uh, you, know, a, you know, a tough time uh, through a quarterback competition uh, during uh, camp in last summer. He did a great job. He handled that very well. He clearly deserved to to be the starter, how he kept progressing and learning and getting better every day he went on the football field. The best part about Chris is you saw it each week he kept progressing. He played his best football game at the end of the season against Delaware. And he had an outstanding spring, good, see, good winter working out, played really well uh, during spring football. Uh, the big difference for him in the spring is we didn't have Will Rackley and a couple other offensive linemen. We had some young offensive linemen um, getting reps in the springtime. So Chris, I think, was able to work on a lot of things. I think his movement in the pocket right now is, is better than it's ever been. And, uh, you know, as we go continue to go through, um, you know, our 29 days of practice before we uh, get to play Mammoth, I, I, I'm looking for Chris to continue to uh, progress. And, and he's also uh, really developed into an outstanding leader. So we're, we're really excited about Chris coming back and leading our football team. Actually, you mentioned Will Rackler. That brings up a question for me. Uh, Talk a little bit about the difference of the offensive line this year. What's it like not to have that big guy? Well, it, yeah, it's certainly uh, – well, we really don't know for sure yet till till we get out there. But guys like Will, they don't come around very often uh, in the Patriot League. And, um, you know, he was gifted with uh, – the biggest gift he had was his work ethic. He tremendous worker. He has set a tremendous example for all the players on our football team. And, you know, my hope, and I know that Brett Sawyer, our offensive line coach, builds on this is, you know, to use Will as an example of not necessarily, you know, not everybody's six foot four, 320 pounds, but just how he approached everything, how, how he worked at it. And so losing those intangible things, you know, could be the biggest, you know, detriment um, to our group up front. But you can't replace Will. I mean, we'll just have a lot of guys working hard, trying to compete to, to fill that position. I know you're excited for Saturdays, but then are you also excited for Sundays to get to watch him? With <laughs> we don't get to uh, we don't get to watch too much pro football, but you know maybe we may have to get Direct TV in the office or something so we can pick up some Jags games. Uh, you got a trio of linebackers returning, led by Mike Groom, who's earned a couple preseason accolades. Just talk about what they bring to the defense, how they're going to lead a defense that uh, you guys lost a couple defensive backs that they're going to bring. To them. Well, uh, yeah, without a doubt, the big hit on defense was the secondary, um, but I really like our front seven. Um, you know, the linebackers of, you know, Tanner Rebus uh, established himself last year. I think he was second team all league. Uh, Mike, obviously, preseason uh, player of the year on defense. Colin Newton has really been the catalyst of our defense since we inserted him in that outside linebacker position as a, as a sophomore. I like those kids because they're all good leaders in, in different ways. You know, Colin's very vocal, very emotional. Uh, Tanner is, you know, incredibly bright. Mike is, you know, one of the toughest guys that you're going to find. So, you know, collectively, and, and we've obviously got some, you know, some, some other guys. Devin Green's going to be, you know, uh, someone that's played inside linebacker for us a bunch as a sophomore and had a bunch of injuries last year. He's coming back into the fold. Uh, you know, as a 3-4 defense, the linebackers really have to be the keys to your defense, and I think the group that we have right now is outstanding. Uh, with the young secondary, I, I think we'll have maybe an added um, uh, uh, premium on getting to the quarterback. We've done a nice job in that in the past getting to the quarterback, but 
uh, putting pressure on the quarterback so they don't have a lot of time to you know, maybe take advantage of some youth back there. I think a lot of that comes from our linebackers blitzing and all those guys do a great job, particularly Colin uh, creating uh, you know, pressure on the quarterback. So excited definitely to have that group of guys back. And I know, what, what are you looking forward to? You've got a lot of challenges this season, especially with the uh, non-conference schedule. Just talk a little bit about that. Very challenging non-conference schedule. Starts going out to um, you know, Monmouth University uh, at their place, uh, Labor Day weekend. So I'm expecting it to be a hot day out there. Hope we get some sea breezes to cool us off a little bit. But Monmouth is a team coming off of a, of a season somewhat reminiscent to uh, our 2009 season. They were a good football team, but they lost a lot of close football games. They could have easily been a seven and four, three and eight football t- or eight and three football team instead of the opposite. Uh, so our guys know that, and you know we're playing a school with uh, 45 scholarships. The last time we matched up against an NEC team was a few years back, and we didn't fare too well. So that won't be lost. You know that opponent. You know our kids will be ready for that. Then we come back home opener against New Hampshire Wildcats, who. I think Coach McDonald and his team, are uh, every year they do the best job in all of FCS football. They've been to the playoffs, I think, nine or ten years in a row, the longest streak of any program out there in the nation. So that's certainly a challenge. And we got embarrassed by them a year ago. So, you know, we want to get some payback there if we can. Princeton, at Princeton, uh, night game. Uh, Princeton, new coaching staff last year, had a down year. I'm sure they've made a lot of uh, strides, you know, moving forward. So that's a challenge. Uh, then we've got Liberty, uh, who I think is probably going to be a top 20, top 25 team when the, when the early polls come out. Their quarterback is the returning um, total yardage leader in the country. They've got a wide receiver that's an NFL draft pick. Uh, so it's certainly not an easy opening run for us. I think what our football team has to do is embrace each one of those challenges and try to get better uh, each week. And uh, you know, and then we've got Yale before we get you know into the heart of our Patriot League schedule. And leading into that Patriot League schedule, can that, help, can that really help you guys getting into that? Uh, that's game? kind of been our philosophy. We've always wanted to play. We've played Villanova. We've played New Hampshire. We've played some good, very good football teams early in the season in hopes that uh, just what happened last year, you get an opportunity, you, you, you take advantage of your opportunities, you can win the Patriot League, and then when you go to compete at the, at the championship level, you know, you're used to playing people that are strong and, and stronger than you and faster than you. And, and uh, I thought we matched up pretty well in the playoffs last year. Thank you very much, Coach. You're welcome.